Okay, quick intro, I know you're busy. My name is Blake, I pay for the mortgage on my house by reselling things online, websites like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Mercari, and today, you're gonna ride along with me as I pick out rare, valuable, expensive items from thrift stores. What I like most about thrift stores is you can walk into pretty much anywhere in the country and if you have the right eye you can find some stuff worth reselling these two blu-ray players the first one was a sony 3d blu-ray player the second one was a samsung i sell these both on amazon the sony 3d blu-ray player having a remote that was a big upsell i paid about 10 bucks each uh, a little bit less than that walking over to this side of the electronic section this is a big electronic section but these do exist you just have to go to the right cities uh, i found some remotes i found an amazon Amazon Kindle. The remotes were two bucks a piece. The Kindle was eight. The Sony boom boxes, uh, this XM radio, all of that was priced up kind of high. It was 20 bucks for uh, each of these larger items. And although they do sell, I don't want to have in the warehouse too much space. I'm trying to buy smaller stuff, easier stuff to ship and store. Down here, a wine temperature reader. Vino temp, didn't buy it. Could be good, but I thought the cleaning, I don't want to do that. I went back here, I found this hands-free page turner. It's for musicians, they hit the foot pedal, and it turns the page on their computer. Uh, that too ended up being uh, not profitable. It sells for about 30 bucks new. They want five bucks here. One sale in the past 90 days. Not a bad product, but um, you know, not the kind of thing I'm gonna buy. I put these all back on the shelf. I put them in my cart, I scan them, I put them back. Uh, I use the eBay app or the Amazon Seller app for those of you who are curious. The next section I hit up is the clocks. This is a Philips clock, very dirty, kind of damaged, a little heavy. This white Sony bedside alarm, I did pick that up. It'll sell for about 25 bucks. Everything else here was not so good. Uh, I'm looking for projection clocks, maybe uh, weather clocks. That's a lightning port charger. Usually those are good, but someone snapped the lightning port off. For the past few years, I've seen lightning port accessories go down in demand. I think that we are finally transitioning to a post port Apple world, at least in the resale business. If you can find like a phone base and four receivers with their stands, that can sell for between like 45 and 60 bucks on eBay and about 65 and 100 on Amazon. The issue is though on Amazon, most of those brands are gated for new sellers, so I think eBay is where you're at. Now, none of these were complete, uh, so I didn't buy them, but if I did, besides cleaning them, I would test to make sure the batteries in the receivers works. There are often times hidden gems in the miscellaneous electronics section. So far, I haven't found any, but up here, uh, what I saw was an outdoor uh, switch of sort of timer. It's like for turning on, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a sprinkler or Christmas lights. Broken packaging, passed on that. A Guitar Hero Live guitar for six or seven dollars. That's a great buy. These sell for about 50 usually. Uh, you see them a little bit lower on eBay, a little bit more on Amazon. I always check the battery panel to make sure there's no corrosion. The whammy bar was tight. Besides those two things, you're rarely gonna have like a loose wire, uh, but those are the main two things that break. Those mad cats video game steering wheels they sell for like 50 bucks but they sell very very rarely i'm looking for headphones looking for like beats or bows didn't have them here but that's okay because what i found next was pretty crazy and pretty valuable so i'm over here in the calculator bin what i call it and i saw these blue handle thingamabobs what do you think that is eerie jig what do you think that is they got blue handles. There's some some various, like, that's an old uh, speedometer where it checks rotations. It was broken, so I didn't buy it. But what do you think these blue handle things are? In the comments below, I want you to tell me what do you think they are. Okay, have you done it? These are jig molds. You melt down lead, and I'm sure you know you all know about the proper precautions one must take. You put a hook in there, you clamp it, you pour the molten lead in, because as we all know, lead has a pretty low melting point. Uh, when it hardens or solidifies, you have a jig. It's a, a round head jig and an eerie jig. So if you're catching some walleye down there uh, on the northern border of Ohio, 
or if you're doing whatever you do, roundhead jigs with catching perch, these are great for you. They are worth 35 bucks on eBay used. I will sell them both for 70. Uh, it'll cost about eight bucks to ship, so pretty decent margins. Okay, little interlude here. This is not about resale stuff. It's about learning. This is the Do It website. Do it when pride is on the line, which I think is one of the best slogans for a company that makes fishing lures. Uh, look at all the various molds they make. And these, as far as I can tell, they all retail new 50 bucks. Uh, and that's not including shipping. So 35 for each of those is a pretty fair deal. But I'm just amazed at all of the different molds. I'm assuming that this is like a machine shop and they machine these out of whatever the very, the very hard metal is. But holy crap, there's dozens of them. And now you know something new. Don't say Blake didn't teach anything because right there I taught you about jigs. Uh, over here I'm looking in the golf clubs. That's like a hole digger. It'd be good for a, I don't know what it'd be good for, but good for something. Sometimes I can find some ping putters or some like five or 10 year old drivers I can sell for 15 bucks. That Adams tight lie, left-handed uh, three wood. I think it's a 15 degree driver, so that's about a three wood. Six bucks for it, but the head is just beat to hell. It's left-handed, so probably I could get 25 bucks for it. Uh, maybe that, that's kind of a stretch and it might not sell for a year. Here's a great find that for whatever reason, I didn't get a lot of video of. It's a Manfrotto 290 tripod. Manfrotto is an Italian brand. They make very good consumer grade tripods. Remember that name? That one sells for about 180 new at like Best Buy and used on eBay for about 75 to 100, uh, depending on how much shipping costs. So on larger, heavier items, shipping is a variable cost. The further away it goes, the more it's going to cost you. For DVDs, for video games, they're so light, they're always going to ship first class mail. And that has a much more fixed, you know, there is some variance, but it's generally, you know, three or four dollars to ship any video game or any DVD. So when you buy these, it's a lot easier to understand what's profitable and what's not profitable. If it sells for 10 bucks and I can buy it for 50 cents and it costs three bucks to ship or four bucks to ship, that's gonna be profitable. Now, unfortunately, none of the video games are good. That's pretty common around here. The uh, These thrift stores get searched hard. When you're selling DVDs, be it on eBay or be it on Amazon, and if you wanna know how to get ungated for DVDs on Amazon, I have a video on that. I'll, I'll put a card so you can watch that video. If you wanna do that, there's two main ways to go about it and that's scanning everything which takes a lot of time but you make sure you don't miss any profits or cherry pick now what i do is i cherry pick i'm looking for titles that stick out to me because they're either new they're sealed new in the package or, or they are a weird like a strange niche that i haven't heard of or it's a title that i haven't heard of those three things, so like Garden State, definitely heard of that. Jillian Michaels Workout, definitely heard of that. There's a DVD right here called Salt. An introduction to Salt. I think it's a religious thing. I don't know. Never heard of that. So I pulled it out. I'm going to scan this. Uh, box sets are big on my list, high on my list. Blu-rays are always worth a scan if you've not heard of it. Now, I've heard of Bullet, the movie, but I've never seen it on Blu-ray. So I scanned that. It's newer. Uh, turns out it's worth like six bucks, so I passed on that. This SNL with Phil Hartman, one of the lesser known guys. I thought maybe it could be a, a big win. This Triple Terror collection. I like those. I'm going to call it like a pseudo anthology. So with these pseudo anthologies, the basic business model is some distribution company buys the rights to several movies and puts them in the same package, sometimes the same disc. This is all good and well, except these licenses run out or they're limited. So the Terror Collection from 2015 is not going to have the same titles as the Terror Collection that goes to Big Lots this year. Uh, that makes them start off as budget DVDs, but as the supply diminishes of at least sealed ones, the price goes up, especially if in like that case, it's famous movies like It on this uh, right there, the triple collection. So these are the ones that I'm finding. I actually also found out that the sci-fi collection was new as well. So used, this one sold for 25 or 35 bucks, but new, the lowest merchant fulfilled price on Amazon is about 64 bucks and there are no prime prices. So if I FBA this, I can price it at like 70 or $80 and make the sale. I eventually passed on these two baseball mitts. I looked them up, that one's A9853. Uh, the other one has the, the number RSE36, uh, endorsed by Tony Gwynn. So I don't know a lot about baseball or baseball mitts, 
These two, in passable condition, would have sold for about 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, they wanted five or six bucks here. I don't know what usable condition is, so I passed on them. What I also looked up was a lot of toys. That was a Cogsworth Disney plush, only worth like 12 bucks, so I passed. Uh, whenever I see Fisher Price or Leapfrog Kids laptops, I'm always looking those up too. Any kind of toy that's either new, like this, uh, magnetic paper dolls that's Disney branded, that's going to be worth a look up. Or like this, like I said, a Leapfrog Kids laptop. Uh, generally, my thrift stores in this area sell them for between like 3 and $7. So if you can sell it for more than $40, it's a very profitable flip. The way you would do that is by avoiding the newer models, as in they were recently released to the public. You want to find older stuff, older iterations of current models that has no competition, at least no new competition, on the listing. So uh, let's say I'm the only person who sells a uh, Fisher Price kids laptop from 2017. If I'm the only person who sells that and someone wants to replace one that broke, maybe their kid threw it in a puddle, I don't know. Uh, they'll pay 40 bucks for that. Whereas the newer ones, there's so much competition that you can't realistically charge 40 bucks for it. That's what I'd call a high profit, low volume flip. And oftentimes books are high profit, low volume, especially if the sales rank, and I'm selling these on Amazon. So when I say sales rank, I mean uh, how they're ranked in terms of popularity the least popular books, it makes sense they'd sell less, right? So a lot of these like paperback sci-fi books, sometimes I can find those that go for about 20 bucks, but the sales rank is like 2 million. So I'm gonna sell one every four to six months, stuff like that, whereas I, you know, if I wanted to do high volume, uh, I, I'd find a distributor, I can't name any off the top of my head who does book distribution, but I'd be buying their best sellers and making, you know, 80 cents profit per book, but selling 100 a day two different business models uh, for thrifting. I think that we all understand that we're more geared towards the low volume, high profit flips, but that doesn't mean that you can't find new in box, brand new stuff that uh, a big box store like Target donated because I've seen that too. In this case, a few books, nothing too crazy. I think like few four or five dollar profit books, but nothing to uh, write home about, or in this case, show you guys, because it's kind of boring to show you a book. Here's my cart at the first thrift store. Uh, I bought some DVDs, I bought some electronics, that Manfrotto tripod, uh, just basic stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to a second Goodwill. I'm trying to find some furniture, right? I got my awesome uh, jig molds, now I gotta buy some furniture for the house that I just bought. Let's see what they have. Outside of this Goodwill, nothing catching my eye really. This is all kind of, you know, I think the odds of finding furniture at Goodwill that you want is pretty slim. The one thing that did interest me is this. Now, I don't know what this style of table is called. When I grew up, we had one behind our couch, but I want this for beneath my TV. Just that one, uh, that one piece. It has a matching set. It's all really dinged up uh, in, inside the store. One had a burn mark on it. So I think I might buy this, potentially paint it, restain it. I don't know. What do you guys think I should do with this? Do you like it? But now let's talk about clothes. This Goodwill prices all t-shirts, all jeans, all jackets at the same price. So t-shirts are like four bucks, jackets are like seven bucks, jeans are like 550. There are a few exceptions as you're gonna see in a few seconds, but for the most part, if you find a good brand like a North Face jacket, it's not gonna be as expensive as it would at other thrift stores. The flip side is they do pick out the good stuff, the good video games, the good electronics. So mostly here I'm buying toys and clothing. The only good toy I found today was this Beat Bow. It's the girl version. I don't remember the name of this, but it sells for between like 35 and 60 bucks, depending on the time of the year. I will list that high and wait till Christmas. It was a very popular toy. It dances, it sings. These dolls don't dance. Thank God, how terrifying would that be? They're not quite haunted dolls, uh, but they are scary. More clothing. I couldn't find any good brands like Duluth Trading Co. or L.L. Bean. I did find a Logo 7 Michigan Windbreaker. They wanted eight bucks for it. I figure I might get 25 for it. Not enough meat on that bone for me to buy another one. I've got a lot of clothing like that in my warehouse already. I haven't listed. Ugh. So the t-shirts, I'm looking for vintage band t-shirts. Any giant graphic designs. I'm seeing nothing. Um, all I bought at this trip was that single toy, the Beat Bow toy. All of these t-shirts, while I'm sure they're great, uh, are not really worth flipping, at least not the profits that I'm looking for. If I'm buying a new t-shirt, I want it to at least make me 25 bucks. Uh, and while that's not uncommon, 
here I couldn't find any. I've been doing this for a long time and over the years I've learned to believe that it's not the best sellers who are buying everything, it's the best sellers who know when not to buy anything. A big mistake I made over the past few years from like 2017 until 2019 was I carried too much stuff in my warehouse. I bought too much stuff. I'd say, oh, a Nike Golf uh, golf shirt. I can get 10 bucks for that. That's worth selling, and it is, but I didn't have the, the hours in the day to list all these things. So I had a whole bunch of profitable items, but not enough time to list them. What did you think was the best thing I found? Was it this, the Roundhead Jig Mold? I like these the most. I think that's like the coolest flip. Could I have bought that Venology or Vino Temp, whatever it was, the, the, the wine dispenser and tried to fix it? Yeah, definitely. But that's just not what I do. Is that what you do? Would you have done things differently? Were there other things in the video that you would have bought that I passed on? I'd love to hear your comments below. Tell me. Tell me what you think I did wrong because, you know, it's the internet. Someone's going to tell me what I did wrong.